Hey everyone, Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Okay, so today we're gonna to go over a, a quite a unique insights, but uh, a really good uh, example that came through the uh, Enterprise DNA support forum. It was a scenario someone had and they needed to uh, work out how to uh, evaluate it or, or the logic required within, um, within Power BI to be able to showcase it. And basically this scenario was, well, they wanted to um, evaluate what the or, or compare between different time periods so you, you might be thinking well time intelligence probably could do this very easily but the difference was that it was actually not based on some generic time intelligence uh, or time comparison it was they wanted to compare sales that they made on say a particular day versus sales that they made the very last time they sold the same thing so it might not be that they sell they sold um, something the day before or the month before etc they wanted to just evaluate on any specific day how much they sold on that day versus how much they sold of exactly the same thing the very last time they sold it so very unique insight but a really really interesting one about around how you can work it out how you can actually implement this sort of calculation with dax formula specifically uh, to then showcase it in a, in a, in a compelling way so i've I've built it. I've gone through the example. We worked out the solution, and um, and and it worked for 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 the requirement. Now, I thought it would be good to make a video of it to show you how dynamic this is, and and how you could actually utilize this. You know, if this was an insight that was um, that was of interest uh, for something that you were trying to work out. So, what I've done here, and the, and, and one of the differences is that uh, we want to actually do this not from the date table in this case. We actually want to use, in this case, I'm using the purchase date, which actually comes from my sales table in this case. So, I'm just going to jump down to sales, and you'll see that I've got purchase date here. So, this is actually, you know, for every single transaction, every every uh, single iteration of something that's um, that it's occurred in our fact table. And I put this into a um, into a table. Now, if I didn't actually have this one here, so you'll see you'll see here based on any selection that we make, you know, whether it's a customer or it's a product or, or any filter we're placing, it's only showing the sales that were made and the actual date that they were purchased on, right? So then, what I want to do is I want to look at any particular result here and then jump back and work out what was the result before and then be able to compare it. Okay, and so that's what I was able to achieve with this particular formula here. So, so sales last purchase, right? And so you'll see here that I'm getting the correct result. So 16, uh, 1638 is now actually, I can now actually compare it to the next time that a sale was made for this particular customer and because it's now in this new context. Now, the way I worked it out was twofold, okay? The first thing I needed to do was I really needed to isolate the last sale date, okay? The prior date that we actually sold. So I wanted to actually work out, well, based on whatever context we were in, so whatever context or whatever row, I wanted to be able to look back and work out, okay, well, what was this date? So if, if we're in this result here, 947, well, what was actually that date when 947 was the, pr the prior time when we, we made that sale? So to actually work that out, I did. I placed it inside a variable, and this is what this particular uh, calculation does. So what I'm trying to work out is I'm trying to work out the date, so I'm trying to work out the max date, uh, and what I'm doing here is I'm filtering, I'm looking through every single, every single date, and I'm saying, well, is that date, is that date below the current date? That's what this particular function does. So max date within, within, within this filtering function is actually returning the current date that the sale is being made. And I'm actually trying to place a filter or create a table which, um, which only has dates before before this particular date and then based on those dates that are before I'm then working out okay well, what is the max date so that that table is always going to return say the very last the very last or prior date we made the sale so now that we have that well then we can feed that in via another filtering function to return a particular um, result in a different context so if we think about what we're actually doing um, under return here, we, we are calculating total sales, but instead of calculating on the particular day that it, that it has actually been made, we're actually going to, via filter, go and um, look through every single purchase date and have only return the purchase date from the prior date, okay? And so that is going to produce the new context for the calc, and then we're going to return the total sales for that. And that's how we then basically drag the sales from the prior day into the current day.
or, or say the sales from the last time we sold that particular thing or sold to that particular customer into the current context. So very, very um, unique insight, but if you think about the way I've combined uh, formulas here, especially use variables, variables are just so powerful, so powerful uh, for this type of thing. I think it looks way more intuitive than actually having to try and place this down into, um, into this filter here, and then very quickly you'd have this very complex formula. But this, I guess, breaks it out, right? We've got, it's like a two-step process. We're working out the date, and then once we've actually worked out the, the last date we made a sale, uh, well, then we can just feed in that variable and simplifies what we're actually trying to showcase in, the, in, in our formulas in a, in a lot more intuitive way. And then, you know, if you want, you can also add um, comments by doing a, a double forward slash. I've showcased this a few times, but you know, it just makes you know, your formulas really um, intuitive and easy to understand for you later on down the track and also for anyone, really, who might actually look at your model in the future. Okay, so uh, really good, um, really good insight. Really, really unique. So really like showcasing these things. If um, you know, if you if you enjoyed enjoyed learning about this one, certainly throw the video a like. Really appreciate it. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. It's going to be lots and lots of uh, content exactly like this with very unique insights posted on YouTube. Um, and obviously, is uh, you know, very detailed. If you want to get more into sort of detailed training around various different aspects of Power BI, obviously, obviously, there's membership and Enterprise DNA online for you to evaluate uh, if it's right for you there. Okay, so all the best with this one. Um, certainly, you know, if you also want some help, um, uh, check out the Enterprise DNA support forum. You do have to be a member, uh, an Enterprise DNA member, to actually um, be able to get support. But um, you know, certainly that's an avenue. If you do have some unique um, questions like this that you need to, that you need solving, um, you know, there's there's a um, a platform there for you to get answers. Okay, all the very best. Take care. Cheers.